So good morning. Welcome to Carolina's Rehabilitation Mount Holly. I'm Peter Cassidy, the administrator of the hospital. On behalf of Atrium Health and Carolina's Rehab Mount Holly, I wanted to welcome you here today, students at work. Uh, you're going to have an opportunity to meet a lot of our great teammates and learn about all the careers available to you uh, at Atrium Health and in healthcare. So again, welcome. Uh, hope you have a great day. My name is Cindy Lyman. Hi, my name is Kenneth Person. Hey, I am Brandy. My name is Colleen Newton. Hey guys, I'm Chandra Mullian. My name is Joe Sala. My name is Alyssa and I'm an occupational therapist here at Mount Holly. Hi, good morning. My name is Colina. I'm one of the rehab assistants here at CR Mount Holly. So my role as the administrator is to make sure that we're achieving our mission of um, improving health, elevating hope, and advancing healing for all. And uh, we're a rehabilitation hospital, so our primary mission is to help people recover um, and regain their independence after illness or injury. So one of the programs that I wanted to highlight this morning is something that's called the Rise to Success program. Rise to Success is one of Atrium Health's signature workforce development programs. The program is a youth initiative targeting graduating seniors from area high schools and provides a career pathway for outstanding graduates with a 3.0 or higher GPA who are interested in healthcare educations and careers. Rise to Success enables participants to earn a certified Nurse A certificate and an associate's degree in a healthcare related discipline from a community college with Atrium Health support. Participants will have an opportunity to obtain a part time position at Atrium Health and are encouraged to pursue their bachelor's degree upon program completion. An important thing students should know when applying for the program is that if you put 101% effort, then you can always do it. And the reason why it's the best opportunity is because they support you with school as well as a job. What I enjoyed most about this nurse aid course is uh, building a close bond and relationship with my classmates. And I really don't have the need to call them classmates. They're more close friends and I feel like I can depend on them for anything. I learned that I am great with patients. Uh, I'm confident in myself and I just like helping people. You're making long-term friends and you're connecting with a lot of people in different medical fields. They're like a family, it's just not about work. They want you to come and love what you're doing and, and, and love, come to work, ready to work and not having a bad attitude. This is just a good program for low-income people who don't have the financial aid or have the money to um, cover college and let you major for what you want to major for. So it's just really opportunity that you can't pass up. Rise to Success is one of many ways Atrium Health seeks to make a difference in economic and social mobility issues in the Charlotte community. As the largest employer in Charlotte, Atrium Health has a responsibility to prepare the next generation of healthcare workers. I'm the practice manager with the physician clinic here at Carolina's Rehab Mount Holly. I've been here for about seven years. The careers that we have here are, um, they're of course the physicians and, and PAs that um, take care of the patients and for them, the, the education is, of course, they have to have a bachelor's degree, then they have to have a, a doctorate, then they have to go through um, internship and then residency. We also have front desk folks who check our patients in, check our patients out, make appointments. Um, that requires um, a high school education. And then um, they have to be able to, you know, all of, our, all of our staff has to be able to function with an electronic medical record. Um, and then they also have to be able to manage our, our um, systems that for um, scheduling appointments, um, that sort of thing. Um, we, I also manage the radiology and the ultrasound departments here, which are also another alternative for folks. They require a two-year degree, and then you go, um, you get um, certified either in radiology or ultrasound. We see patients when they're discharged from the inpatient unit, whether they've had a stroke, whether they've had a spinal cord injury, um, maybe they were just um, had maybe they had COVID and, and are what we call debilitated. They just need, don't have the energy and the ability to function. 
Um, so we see them in the clinic to see, make sure that they're, re they're recovering in the way that we want them to and the way that they want to. Um, and then also determine how are they doing with therapy? Do they need some more physical therapy, occupational therapy, or speech therapy? And if they do, the doctors will order that. We also see patients who have had amputations, who work very closely with their prosth prosthetist. We also do Botox injections, not for aesthetics, but for, um, for treatment purposes. Um, so we do it for patients who have had a stroke, maybe they have CP or MS, something like that, and their muscles are just not what they need to be able to function in their world. So we do the Botox injections and it makes them be a little more independent in their life. I'm the general manager here at Mount Holly Hospital. Uh, I am in charge of food service. Uh, I am director, I control uh, everything from the patient food and the care uh, to the cooks uh, that cook the food, um, also to the uh, kids who uh, deliver the trays and everything like that. So. Uh, we do have a lot of different um, equipment and machinery uh, in the kitchen uh, from different steamers to fryers um, to different uh, things like that. Um, we do offer training to all of our chefs, all of our um, frontline staff um, to help them uh, be able to be successful in uh, each area that they work in. Um, we do have certifications for our sh chefs. They are um, all serve safe certified, um, so we all uh, have to go through that training to make sure that we can pass uh, all of our inspections and things here at the hospital. Uh, we do have uh, a lot of internships that we have. Um, that is one of the things that we do offer. Um, I'm actually one of the, um, I actually had the opportunity to be an intern um, at the hospital before uh, at CMC Maine, Carolina Medical, now known as Atrium Health. Uh, I was there for about 12 years. Um, we come from Johnson & Wales. Uh, we partner very well with Atrium to provide students the opportunity to get some access um, to our field, um, to learn some different things um, before you get in that industry. I am a registered nurse. I, have, I started 14 years ago here as a nurse and have worked my way up and I'm now a clinical supervisor um, on a rehabilitation unit. To be in the position I'm in, I do have to have a bachelor's degree, um, but my staff nurses are all, for the most part, associate degree nurses, RNs. The level of care we give, we only have RNs or higher. We don't have um, LPNs in this level of care, but um, I had to go back later to get my bachelor's to get the, the position I'm in now. In high school, I did go to what was called then the School of Technology in Lincoln County and um, went every day for a period or two, I think, and I did get my CNA. Um, in high school, so by the time I was out of high school, I was able to go straight and work on my prerequisites for my nursing degree to apply to nursing school sooner. So in rehabilitation nursing, it's a different type of nursing on its own, um, where patients do, where acute care still, so patients do have to be sick enough to be in a hospital and need 24-hour RN care. Um, IV blood and antibiotics and things like that, but there's also they also have to be well enough to tolerate three hours of therapy a day. So each patient does do three to four hours of therapy a day, broken up throughout the day, and it takes a lot of organization for us as nurses um, to work with therapy. A huge team approach to medicate to talk back and forth about what's going on with the patient, they're having these symptoms or, you know, didn't sleep well last night, anything like that. I work for Mount Holly Rehab. I've been here 13 years and I'm a manager in housekeeping. I was a housekeeper when it was called Carolina Healthcare over at the main hospital. We clean the rooms, uh, we dust mop, we varnish the floors. We have days where we do detailing um, we do the trash, we're responsible for the shredding bins, we're responsible for linen, we're responsible for ourselves, we're responsible for the patients, making sure we provide excellent service and we're keeping their rooms clean. I am the Senior Administrative Assistant here um, to Peter Cassidy, he's the Vice President of Carolina's Rehab. 
I have worked here, this is my second year. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in psychology um, and I'm working towards getting my master's degree in health administration. To be an administrative assistant, you do not need to have a bachelor's degree. Uh, it is re recommended that you have an associate's degree uh, and a bachelor's degree is, is great, but a high school diploma is required for my position. Um, you do need healthcare experience to be a senior administrative assistant. I'm the Red Tech at Carolina Rehab, Matt Holly here. My duties as an x-ray tech include take, uh, processing x-rays that the doctors order. Um, I follow them up with all the doctors that work here. Uh, I take care of the inpatients and I take care of outpatients from the clinic up front. Uh, to become an x-ray tech, I had to go to a two-year school program. I did that up at New York after I retired from the New York City Police Department. There's like four different fields of radiology. They include general x-ray, ultrasound, CAT scan, and MRI. Each one you need a separate program for to do. So I stayed at under just doing general x-ray. So as an occupational therapist, I'm part of the therapy team here. We work on getting patients back to being home safely. We work on things to make them more independent, make them stronger after being in the hospital. Um, some things, some diagnoses that we see are patients that have had strokes, they've fallen, they've had infections or heart attacks. So we really focus with the patient to reach their goals and to get them home as soon as we can. Um, so for occupational therapy, it's a uh, you have to have a master's degree to have um, the master's degree or doctorate degree um, for this profession. Um, you have to take a bunch of prerequisite classes in college. So for me, I was an exercise science major and I took a lot of anatomy, a lot of physics and chemistry classes. And then I went to a graduate school and learned very specific things for this profession. So my job as a rehab system or rehab tech, there are a lot of names for it, basically to help assist Alyssa, um, one of the OTs or physical therapists with help with plus twos if they need help with a chair follow, um, help set the equipment up for therapy. Um, they let them know ahead of time, hey, I need a plus with this, I need this equipment. So we go around and just get everything started to help make their day easy, that's the best way to describe it. Um, we do keep things clean after each treatment, keep everything organized, um, set up the wheelchairs, putties, you name it, that's what we do. So we just kind of help make the therapist's day easier for them. As um, far as schooling, yes. Um, I went to Penn Foster, which is an online course, and that basically opens up and talks about what each role of a physical therapist, occupational therapist, and speech therapist does. And I did get training um, outpatient. So you do a lot of hands-on training, learning with transfers, learning the muscles, lower extremity exercise, and upper extremity exercise. And here at Mount Holly, we work as a team with a lot of different therapists. So with the techs there's and the occupational therapists, there's also physical therapists and speech therapists, which Kalina mentioned. Um, physical therapists, they work on a lot of mobility. Um, with the patients and their education is they go to high school and then college and then it's a doctorate degree after that which is an additional three years after college. Um, speech therapists, they work on if a patient has speech deficits or swallowing or to help with their brain because a lot of times with the patients we have there, their brain's affected so they work on a lot of cognition and they go to high school, college and then two extra years. So we're going to do a little demonstration of the patients that I see and kind of the intervention strategies that I like to use. So Coco here is going to uh, represent someone that had hip surgery and one of the things that you can't do after hip surgery is bend your hip past 90. The hip needs to heal and it's and you don't want to you know hurt anything a lot of surgeons are really specific on that but you know Coco wants to take off her shoes and show you her awesome socks that she has underneath. So we're gonna kind of go through um, some ways that she can use that to remove her shoes and put on a pair of nice socks um, without breaking that precaution. So this here is a dressing stick and it has these pieces that you can manipulate clothing with. So Coco, I'm gonna have you take off your shoe with that. She's been practicing really hard. Stand up. Beautiful, show off those socks. Awesome, okay, so you can use this to also take off a pair of socks, take off shoes, um, 
and all of that. So now she needs to put on her socks to have the grip because we're very, very specific about the socks that we like our patients to wear. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put this over this awesome sock aid. Okay, you're gonna slip it right in like a shoe. This has to be on the back because that's the point of the sock is to have the grips on the bottom. And then you just pull it up. Wonderful. Look at that. 